saw a prophesy as he commanded them. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet. Loud as a talker trying to reach the people. Scopus, naysayers, you hypocrites. And keeping one damn law, your honor with your lips. Blind guys leading the blind into a pit. You two fold the child of hell, then your pastor is. Once a people with no mercy, we will pass the kids. All praises to the Father, we've been reconciled. We birth, resurrected, and regenerated. Sin using flesh, cover bones that were naked. This holy Bible is the antidote to heal the people. But we still some stiff neck and rebellious children. Line up on line, here we're little and there a little. And when he was convicted, we start coming at him about his sins. What he do? The wicked flee when no man pursue it. But the righteous are bold as a lion. The righteous are bold as lions. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Pay the camera over there. Matthew 10. I mean Matthew 6. No, no, no. Read this. Right. Chapter 6 and verse 5. And when thou prayest, when thou do what? When thou prayest. Hey, brother, what are they doing over there? What are they doing over there? They're praying, right? They're praying over there, right? Let's see what God, let's see what Christ has to say about that. Let's see what Christ, we all believe in Christ, right? Raise your hand, you believe in Christ. Let's see what Christ has to say about praying like that. Come on. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. What is their purpose? That they may be seen of men. Then I say unto you, they have their reward. That's their reward. To be seen of men. See, I pray for you. I pray for you in the name of uh, Caesar Porsche. Can they pray for you in the name of Jesus the Christ? They pray for you in the name of Caesar Porsche. Because God ain't got nothing to do with those people. Read it again. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. So a true Christian or follower of Christ will adhere to this. Would they not? Come on. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. They want to be seen. They want to be seen as just men. We ain't out here. Uh, uh, come on, brother. Let's pray. Let's pray for this brother. No. We out here. We're doing what thus says the Lord. He said, go into the highways and the heavens and get power the people to come in. Go on and spare not and show them where they're going the hell off. That's what God told us to come out here and do. Come on. Now, I say unto you, they have their reward. When thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret. So, if you're going to pray, go in your closet, do it in secret. Why? Come on. And thou, Father, which seeth in secret, so God will reward you openly for praying in secret. Give me Proverbs 28 now. All these people, they ain't keeping commandment one. They're not keeping one commandment, bro, but they out here praying. Watch what God says about their prayers. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So God says, if you're not keeping his commandments, your prayers are abomination. John 9 31. Give me some Rock 15 13. Come on, let's keep it rolling. Come on. Hey, hey, brother. Give him here. Don't listen to the devil. Give me here. Listen, listen, listen. Come on. Chapter 9, verse 31. Now we know that God there is not sinner. You hear that, brother? You see all these sinners in the midst praying over him? God said, we don't hear that. God don't hear sinners. That's what John's telling us. Christ said, Christ said, if you're going to pray, pray to yourself. And he'll reward you openly. What are they doing? Praying openly. Come on. And it says, if you turn away your ear from the hearing the law, meaning actually listening and doing the law, even your prayer should be abomination. Let's see how God feels about that. Come on. So what? Chapter 15, verse 13. The Lord hate him. All abomination. What? The Lord hate him. All abomination. Hey. You ever heard that in church, bro? You ever heard that in church? Oh, yeah? So if you turn away your ear from hearing the law, even 
your prayers are an abomination. So come, 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 come. come. What's your name, bro? Jason. Okay, Zach, bro. Nice to meet you. Read it again. Read that. Read Proverbs 28 and 9. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. You turn away your ear from hearing the law, keeping the law, right? Because faith comes by hearing. Everything comes by hearing the law. If you turn away your, your ear from hearing the law, even your prayer should be abomination. Read that again. Torah, chapter 15, verse 13. The Lord hateth all abominations, and they that fear God love it not. So if you fear God, you don't love that abomination. So what's, what's some abominations our people love? Or our people in the midst of? Homosexuality is an abomination. Give another one. Gluttony, abomination. What's another one? Eating, 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 eating. Right, eating pork. See, the brother, the brother has some knowledge. All praises. All praises. What else? Infidelity, adultery, fornication. Yeah. Uh, it's not abomination. It's sin, but it's not abomination. That's good. You, you, you ran off a lot. You, you went through a lot. That's good. What you got? First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we got to know, we got to understand the unrighteous, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. We want to get there. You want to get there, right? You want the kingdom, right? Okay, come on. Be not deceived, neither fornicator, nor idolater. That's what you said, the, the lasciviousness, the fornication and stuff, okay? Nor idolater, nor adulterer, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's the homos. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what was politically? Sodomites. Sodomites. You, <laughs> that's the sodomites you mentioned. Okay, come on. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So all these types of people, of our people, they won't get the kingdom of God. What does the kingdom of God look like? Who does the kingdom of God pertain to? Who's us? Who's the true nation? The true Jews. What does that mean, the true Jews? You say Africa, you say the true Jews, the true man, you said a lot. And that one that one explanation, you said a lot. You read Galatians 426. Huh? The original man. Uh who's the who's the original man? What nation of people are the original man? Then and today. And where did they come from? So, so it would be an accurate assessment if I said that you believe that Africa is the motherland. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read you something. Read, read. Galatians, you believe in the Bible, right? Okay. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, where, brother? Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. The Bible says Jerusalem is the motherland. It's in close proximity. It's not Africa. The, the landmass the land is called Africa. That it, it was actually called the land of Ham. Okay? It wasn't Africa. It was it was, it was deemed Africa once Leo Scipio's Africanus conquered that landmass. Okay? Uh, Jerusalem is in close proximity to Africa. That's why a lot of times we mistake it from Africans or Egyptians. We were mistaken. Right, right. But but check this out. The motherland, of course, in the Bible is Jerusalem, not Africa, brother. It's not that landmass. It's close. It's the Middle East. It's that area, but it's not Africa. We gotta debunk that. And we're not Africans. Because we were taken from that landmass don't mean that we come from there, that we are of those people. We were taken there, we, we first and foremost, we went there, give me a uh, look. 21. We fled there in 70 AD. We began to migrate throughout uh, the western coast of Africa, northern and western coast of Africa. We were sold first and foremost by the, right there, you see this right here? 
This is a depiction of the sub-Saharan slave trade, where the Africans and the Arabs sold us into slavery. First, they sold us amongst each other for concubines, majority our sisters. Then if you look to this flight, this is the transatlantic slave trade, where those same Africans sold us into the so-called white men today. Okay? This is all historical. All this is in the Bible. Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. So this is Christ talking to the children of Israel. When you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then you know the destruction thereof is not. Come on. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. So all those that are in Judea, flee, flee. If you're in Jerusalem, flee into the mountains. If you look at a map, Jerusalem is here. If you cross over through the mountains, the other side of the mountains is what? What name is? Africa. So we fled into Africa, just like when the angel came and told Joseph, take your son to Africa and hide amongst the people. You understand? That's how you know Christ ain't white. How can Christ hide if he's literally white? How can he hide amongst Africans and not be detected? You understand? Come on. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. So if you went to them, leave. Go. Bounce. Come on. And let not them that are in the countries enter there and do. So if you're away, if you're not home in, your, in Jerusalem, don't come back. Come on. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Come on. But woe unto them that are with child. So woe to them that are still in that land mass that are with child. Because what happened? Jerusalem. They surrounded this, I mean, uh, uh, Rome. They surrounded Jerusalem. Okay? And they shut off the water lines. They shut off the food. So what happened to the sisters that gave birth? They began to eat their children because of hunger. It became bad, man. It became bad. So God said, if you're in the midst of that, if you're, run, if you're not there, don't go back. Because that's the days of what? Vengeance. Come on. And to them that give up in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captives into all nations. You see that? That's why we're scattered amongst all nations. That's why we're in uh, uh, Haiti. That's why we're in Puerto Rico, Trinidad, Jam uh, Jamaica. That's why we're scattered through our armies. And that's the curse that's upon our people. Watch this, Deuteronomy 28. We're gonna jump to the curses now. Deuteronomy 28, I want verse 15 first. You got it? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What did happen to you? What nation of people did that happen to? Imagine this little man right here being taken up from the grass and given to another people. Who did that happen to? No, in history, who did that happen to? Us, it happened to the so-called blacks, yes, the natives and the Hispanics. It happened to them first, it happened to us last. You understand? Come on. Mike, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. So God said we should become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. What's an astonishment? Something looked at in amazement. A proverb, what's a proverb? You want to hide something from a black man, you put it in what? That's a proverb. What do you call a, what do you call a Puerto Rican? A court. Would a defendant please rise? That's a proverb. Hey, they call us Mondays. You want to know why? Because everybody hates a Monday. Yeah, that's a proverb. Come on. And thou shalt become an astonishment. A proverb. So we became astonishments. We became proverbs. Come on. And a byword. We became byword. African American, color, Negro, spick, wetback, nigger, jigaboo, porch monkey, cool. We became all those things. God ain't never called us that. God never called you that. God calls you the prince of the power of God. He called you Israelites. That's what he called you. Come on. Among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. And guess what? I'm a nigga here in America. They call me nigga in China. They call me nigga in the Middle East. I've been. Trust me, I know. Come on. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Hey, how long 
Marcus Favre, bro. They said these curses shall be upon us for a sign and for a wonder and upon our seed forever. So guess what we can look at to determine who we are? What can we look at to determine who we are? Read it again, read it again. And they, and they, these curses, come on, shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. But well, these curses are going to be upon our seed forever. They're going to be a sign. What does the sign do? Give you directions. Tell you who you are, where you come from. It tell you all these things. That's what signs do. So these curses are a sign and a wonder and upon us forever. You understand that, bro? Hey, I got a question for you. Oh, read down, read down. But how do we get over here? How do we get over here? My ships? Is that true? Is that a truth? Hugs hugging your oppressor. Because the scripture says, no hand joined the hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. They still don't get their punishment. Because all nations had us in slavery. You understand that? All nations had us in bondage and captivity. We built the Great Wall of China. We built the pyramids in Egypt. Okay? All nations had us in slavery, bro. So when our people start quoting out of their own thoughts and their own vain opinions, and we read straight out of the Bible, who you gonna listen to? So what does the Bible say? Romans 9. We'll read that. Come on. Romans chapter 9 and verse 11. Romans chapter 9 and verse 11. For the children being not yet born. So this is talking about Jacob and Esau in the beginning in Genesis 25 verse 23 down. It said for the children being not yet born. Come on. Neither having done any good or evil. Not one of those children didn't know no wrongdoing. Not one of them did good or evil. Come on. That the purpose of God according to election might stand. That the purpose of God, God decided that thing. He elected to choose Jacob over Esau before they even did any wrong. He elected that. Come on. Not of works, but of him that call it. It ain't about what you did or your works. It's about him that call it. God said, I'm choosing this people. These are my people. Out of all the nations on the earth, I choose this people. Out of all the birds, he chose a particular bird. Out of all the fruit, he chose a particular fruit. He chose a particular tree. He chose a particular pit. He chose his own people. You understand? Come on. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. According to God's election, he elected to hate Esau. He elected to love Jacob. Come on. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Come on. Is there unrighteousness with God? God a righteous brother? Is God unrighteous because he hates his people and he loved his people? Come on. God forbid no Greek. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Because we limit in God. God said, I have mercy on whoever I want to have mercy on. Come on. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that runneth, that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. So it's according to God, what God wants to do, not according to how we feel or what we think. It's according to what God wants to do. God said, I love this people, I hate this people. That's what God says. So who you gonna believe? You gonna believe God or you gonna believe men? You have a decision to make, brother. You have a very hard decision to make. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.